niggas in the news. Niggas in the motherfucking news. Hey, our first nigga in the news is, you know, I know this is a little bit old, but since this nigga just got broke off extra properly, like, my nigga T.I. T.I. in the news again, man. T.I. going back to the penitentiary, man. Violate parole out here, fuck around in these streets, driving around, blowing cush. Officer, I think he has some pizzas in his pocket, too, with his bitch up in Hollywood, man. You can't be doing that, man. You gotta be, you gotta be careful when you're off in Hollywood, man. You just, you just can't be driving how you want to drive out there. I know niggas think they can do what they want to do, but you can't do what you want to do, man. But anyway, T.I., caught up in the game, man. Gotta go and give him 11 months in the feds, man. 11 months, T.I. It's a cold game. And then, um, T.I. supposedly talked the motherfucker off the roof from committing suicide the other day and shit, you know what I mean? You know? And you just gotta question that, man. I'm like, man, T.I., that's, you know, that's like a weak kind of publicity stunt, I'm believing, man. But you know, man, T.I., hey, you know, when you win in front of that judge, if I would have went in front of that judge, man, I would have been more real with that judge, man. I would have been real with that judge. I would have been like, judge, you know, I made millions and millions and millions of dollars off of this movie, and the nigga was just feeling good, and I was just high. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I fucked up. Instead of going in there with that bullshit, I, I could get off of drugs, I know I could beat this, I know I could do this. No, man, fuck all that bullshit, just keep this shit real, man. Anyway, T.I., 11 months in the feds. It's a cold game, nigga. Uh, another nigga in the news, and, you know, man, I, this nigga Mario, this nigga Mario, the singer Mario, man. I kinda, I gotta touch it. Even though this nigga is really unworthy, I'ma touch it. Because this nigga ain't hot. But Mario, you know. I'm trying to remember some of the songs he sang. But anyway, Mario put hands on his mama. You understand me? You know, I know y'all know, may or may not know, Mario Moms is off in the drugs and narcotics. You see, I think she's fucking with heroin, you know, out there in Baltimore. I think that's where they from. And I think, uh, you know, she's still probably dibbling, dabbling and whatnot. And Mario, I don't know what happened. They live together. I don't know. You put hands on moms. I, I don't understand that right there, man. You know... You know where I'm from, man. You know, you know Compton out here, man. You know in the hood. You know, uh, man, niggas got a lot of love for their moms, man. And you know, a lot of niggas' moms be fucking with narcotics and shit. And niggas' moms be, but niggas always respect moms. And you gotta kind of put a crooked eye on a nigga that disrespect his mama, man. Put hands on his mama, man. If you a nigga to put hands on your mama, man, what the fuck you do to me? You know what I'm saying? So. I would never want to even be associating, talking to a nigga that put hands on his mama. So, Mario, that was some proper bitch-made type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and another thing, man, you know, I you know, I don't even really like Mario. Because last time I seen Mario was at motherfucking backstage at the motherfucking Marshawn Brochus concert down at the Congo room, man. That nigga is like a little fucking bitch, man, for real, man. I, you know what I mean? And if you hear this nigga, Ball Smack Top Soil said that shit, nigga, that she's like a little bitch, man. You like a little bitch made nigga backstage dancing around. It ain't even your motherfucking concert. What kind of nigga be backstage at a concert that ain't his concert dancing around and singing the shit, nigga? With the same motherfucking watch that you had for the last motherfucking three, four years, nigga. Step the jury game up, nigga. You supposed to be an R&B, nigga. Man, fuck Mario, homie. Putting hands on his mama, nigga. All right. Another nigga in the news. Uh, I'm sorry I got a little emotional, man. I, you're not supposed to put hands on moms, man. Even
even if moms is crazy, man, you just got to leave, man. You can't put hands on moms, man. What kind of niggas put hands on moms? You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, another nigga in the news, man. I'm going to just touch on this. This is a little old, but I'm going to touch on it. Brett Favre in the news sending the bitch dick shots, text messages. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, what, what can I say about that? I'm a little bit shocked that Brett Favre would resort to such tactics to get a bitch to come on up to the room and give him some pussy, man. I, you know, it's, I mean, I never, I, I mean, you know, maybe I may seem a little old. A lot of y'all young niggas out there doing your thistle, but man, I ain't never sent a bitch no dick shots to get a bitch to come over to the house to fuck. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you send a dick, okay. Brett Favre sent a bitch dick shots. Now, it's, you know, it's drama. It seems like it's kind of subsiding. I don't know if he going to get fined, but I, I really think he did that shit. He really sent that bitch some dick shots. You know what I'm saying? You know, can't, you know, what is that saying about a nigga judgment? I mean, come on, man. You got to know if you sit, if you Brett Favre and you send a bitch dick shots, they worth money. You know? That's, you know what, what the fuck? Niggas is crazy. All right, uh, another nigga in the news, man. I, you know, I got to talk about this, man. And a lot of niggas is going to be upset with what I'm going to start talking about right now. And, and, and this is old, but I'm addressing this shit because I feel I need to address this shit. Kanye West. Now, I know he ain't with his bitch no more, um, Amber Rose. I know he ain't with his bitch no more. It sounds like he directed some lyrics at that bitch on on, on that Deuces uh, remix. I'm, I'm not certain, but it sounds like he directed some lyrics at her. You know what I mean? So, the, the thing about the Kanye West thing is I'm, I'm hearing that he paid this bitch like seven, uh, like seven figures to shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, he paid her seven figures to shut the fuck up. Now, I'm really kind of wondering what the fuck a nigga got to pay a bitch to shut the fuck up for. Tune to voice of the African you know what I mean? I mean, I keep hearing this gay shit about Kanye, man. I, you know, I be wondering, man. I mean, I, you know. Now, I guess the nigga is, I guess he's that much of a star to wear. I guess the bitch could write a book about her time with Kanye and maybe that'll sell. I guess I, I guess that nigga that hot, but I mean, what you paying? I mean, what is you paying a bitch for? What is you paying a bitch for? You know what I'm saying? If the bitch was with me, if the bitch was with me for a year, you know what I'm saying? And the bitch is fired. The bitch is fired, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and all the bitches gonna be able to say is like, man, that nigga Vaughn Smack be talking hella shit to me all the time. He's talking shit. Put me out the house a couple of, That nigga crazy. He put me out the house a good three or four times late at night and shit. Then that nigga, all he do, he be smoking kush all the time. Man, this nigga crazy. That's what the bitch had said about me, man. You know? I don't know, man. This nigga, man. Kanye West, why you pay that bitch to shut the fuck up? You, you putting out good music. Your new music is good, but man, I, you know. And Amber, Amber Rose is going to tie into to the subject matter of this show later on when I talk about it, when I get into what I want to talk about later on when I'm talking. All right. Uh, another nigga in the new. All right, we going to... I think I'm going to make this the final next. I want to talk about what's going on at Morehouse College in Atlanta. Morehouse. You know, Morehouse 
It's an institution in the African American community in the thought, you know what I mean? They're having the, the big issues right now going down at Morehouse, man. They got they got an issue with a little group of motherfuckers on campus, probably about five, six, seven motherfuckers. Dudes that dress like bitches, but maintain the fact that they do. It's like, you know, I, I seen some shit in Vibe magazine a while back when uh, Beyonce came out with that single lady shit. And the niggas that taught that bitch how to do the, uh, do the dance, the single ladies dance with some gay dudes that dress like bitches and wear, uh, wear high heels and weaves and shit. I even seen a motherfucker like that on the Wendy Williams show one time. Motherfucker was a full nigga with a beard and mustache and shit, but had a weave and shit like a bitch. He was wearing heels and shit. So that's what type of shit is going on at, at Morehouse right now. So, well, it was going on, but they didn't pass like a, 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 a dress code enforcement. Like, fuck that. You can't dress like that no more, you know what I'm saying? Aim at these little group of motherfuckers. These motherfuckers call themselves the plastics. Some niggas. They call themselves the plastics. They dress like bitches. Now, I don't know how I feel about that because, see, along with them banning them motherfuckers from dressing like that, they said, okay, now motherfuckers can't sag. Basically, you can't dress like a normal nigga no more. You know what I'm saying? You got to dress basically like a white boy going to work. You know what I'm saying? With the dockers and shit on. You know what I mean? Stick me in ass. Look, they want shit like that now. With the uh, Morehouse jacket on, I'm imagining. Or whatever. How they do it out there. You feel me? I don't know how I feel about that shit. I don't go to Morehouse, so I really don't give a fuck like that. But, I mean, you know... Man, why they got a lot of real nigga shit? I mean, it's a men's college. You understand me? If it's a men's college, then you should have to dress like a motherfucking man. And I'm not hating on no gay people. I'm not. I'm not hating on no gay people. I'm just saying. It's a men's college. If you want to be dressing like a bitch, why don't you go to like a regular college like Georgia Tech where, you know, hey, it's okay to dress like a bitch. But hey, at Morehouse Men's College, it's a men's college. So I believe you should have to dress like a man. No disrespect to homosexuals. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say when I say that. Yeah, just saying. Okay. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. When motherfuckers see the motherfuckers like the plastics, you know, people be saying, oh, man, what is, what, what is, what is the world coming to? What is all that shit? But, you know, gay shit has just been going on historically. That's nothing new under the sun. I, you know, I don't know, man. I just think, you know, hey, motherfuckers don't need to be dressing like bitches at a men's cop. That's all. Okay. Now... I got to speak on the uh, restaurant of the week. Restaurant of the week, y'all. This week, man, I want to, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to speak on a spot that's just so close to the heart that I just got to speak on it again. And it's probably going to be like the third time that I made the suggestion of this here location spot to go be eating at. Ruth. Chris Steakhouse in Irvine, nigga. Man, all I gotta say, man, is nigga, the Philip McMahon, nigga, asparagus, nigga, with a glass of Merlot and salad, nigga. Niggas ain't him, nigga. Get nigga had a piece of steak, nigga. Like melt into the mouth, nigga. Tear came to the eye, nigga. Niggas ain't no. I'm trying to put you up on game, but you don't want to hit a game. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. They serving on them hot plates. 
place be like 500 degrees when they bring them to the table, man. I'm trying to told you. All right, y'all. Uh, we're going to get into these reader listener emails, man. Um, we got a bunch of them today. We got a bunch of them today. They flavorful and bomb. I told you I was backed up on them, didn't I? All right, now. I got a, I got a nigga from Los Angeles, California, writing the ball smack hot soil. A young nigga. He say ball smack. Check me out now. I got like four questions for you, man. If you can answer them for me, I'd be real appreciative. The first one go like this. He say ball smack. Uh, how are some ways? You can make a female feel like she's doing you a favor. Okay, that one's pretty easy. You just ask a bitch for some money or some shit like that. Ask a bitch for a significant amount of money. Ask a bitch for like $250. Let let me get $250, man. That bitch will feel like she's doing you a favor, homie. You ask that bitch to drive her car excessively, that bitch will feel like she's doing you a favor, homie. You ask that bitch to go to the mall and get you a few pair of jeans, that bitch gonna feel like she's doing you a favor. All right, let's see. Another question, the part two of the dude's question. He say, uh, how are some ways you can avoid making a female feel like she's doing you a favor? Okay, the way you avoid that is by not having the bitch do, you know, overt favors while you are in a state of need for real. Let me explain what I'm saying. I think when you have everything, when you, everything, when you got your autonomy, you got paper in your pocket, everything is good, you really don't need a bitch, but you get a bitch to kick in stuff to you anyway, because you don't need it. So thus a bitch is doing shit for you, but then she's not really feeling like she's doing you a favor because you don't really need the shit. She's just, she just bringing oblation to the table, you feel me? So, those are some ways that you can make a bitch feel like Wait, how, how did she go? He said, how you make a way that you can make a ways to avoid making a female feel like she's doing your favor. So, yeah. Part three of that. Okay. Why shouldn't a bitch feel like she's doing you a favor? Okay. The reason why you don't want a bitch to feel like she's doing you too many favors is because eventually you will appear needy and weak. And you don't want to appear weak. Like, you need to drive her car all the time because you don't have a car. You feel me? You need to borrow money from her because you never have any money. Because you don't have a job. You feel me? Shit like that, you know. Eventually, that way on a bitch. All right, now. The fourth part. When are times should a bitch see you visibly angry? Now, that's a very good question right there. That's very good right there. It shows that's a smart motherfucker right over there sending that question. Anyway. You never want a bitch to be able to even think that she can push your buttons whenever she want. Meaning, that bitch knows that if she does this or that, you'll blow your top like a fucking psychopathic motherfucker. You want a bitch to be completely bewildered on what really pisses you off for real, for real, for real. Except... You know, the blatant disrespects and things that really piss a motherfucker off. Like, you know, a bitch talking straight up shit or whatever. You know, of course you gonna get mad at a bitch, but 
You don't want a bitch to be able to just push your buttons and get you super pissed at will because, you know, that's not good for you as a nigga. And that usually leads to niggas going to jail or doing some irrational shit that, well, you know, end up in having a nigga in jail or dead or some shit or severely injured in a hospital because a bitch push buttons and made nigga lose control and get out of control. You feel me? All right. But... Let's say you are in a scenario where you need to be protecting a bitch, like, you know, and there are, there are times when you may have to protect a bitch for real in real life, then you need to be able to get mad in the moment, for real, you know what I mean, and, you know, you never know, sometimes you, you gotta get out there and go the distance behind a bitch, you know, so, you don't want a bitch to be able to push your button. And then in times of crisis and danger, you don't want to be no bitch-ass nigga either. You feel me? You want to be ready to go with some gangster shit. You feel me? All right, now. Another nigga in the news, a nigga from Michigan, writes the ball smack. You say ball smack. I got a question that's perplexing the fuck out of a nigga. It's like this. I go to the club and get numbers all day. I talk to bitches all the time on a regular, but bitches say they got a man or they married, and a nigga just has to move on to the next bitch. But a nigga know when a bitch is feeling it. And all the way up to that point, it's a wrap. So, fall smack. Is it that the right thing to do, or should I just keep moving on to the next one, or should I be more persistent with these bitches, even though they tell me that they married or they got a man, because I know they lying to me. Please help a nigga on this. I believe my success rate would improve. Okay, I hope y'all understood that shit right there. You got a nigga that believe the bitches is lying and he should be more persistent. Yeah. All I can say, nigga, is give a bitch your number and keep it pushing. Nigga. That's all you can do, man. Keep it pushing. If a bitch just let you know, like, you know, hey, I got a man and, you know, that's it. That's it. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I mean, I guess you could sit there and see if the conversation is vibing and flowing and vibing and flowing and, you know, uh, try to do that and see if that works. But, uh, I mean, you know, ultimately, if you in the function, if you in the, if you in the, if you in the party, if you in the club, I mean, you're supposed to be sticking and moving anyway. You ain't supposed to be staying on bitch and if the bitch tell you say hey i got a man or a dude you gotta assume that she might be in there with the homegirls and them bitches was watching what she do really and so you can't be getting stuck talking to the bitch for a long period of time and even if the bitch is lying so what just get a bitch a number and you keep the shit pushing you know what i'm saying because if the bitch is feeling you then the bitch is gonna be calling you but if the bitch is not feeling you then the bitch won't be calling you Either way, you just get a bitch's number and be on your way and holla at the next bitch. On to the next bitch. Don't be stuck on just one bitch. I don't know, man. Sound kind of thirsty to me, but I ain't trying to judge or trying to clown you or nothing like that. I mean, I'm just saying. All right, now. Let's go on to this other nigga in the new. Oh, it's a bitch. A bitch from Seattle, Washington writes the ball smack. She say, she say, ball smack, I just started fucking with you recently on Facebook and whatnot, and you seem to have a little bit of game. Here's my question. I've been married to a nigga since about 05, and I've been holding this nigga down real tough. You know, since we've been married, he probably been on the streets by a good year. Since 05. As a matter of fact, the nigga just got out of jail recently and violated his parole, and now he gonna be in there till 2012. 
boss mac i'm a real bitch but what's a bitch to do i'm tired of i'm tired of trying to fuck 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 this nigga in the visiting room i need a normal life with some good dick help a bitch out nigga all right i hope y'all understood that and you know really I just read that question just to show y'all what type of questions I be getting with this motherfucker, man. You know, and baby girl, you know you need to just go ahead and just uh, get some dick to sit on. Get some dick to sit on. And 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 still hold old boy down. Still send him some letters. Still go up there fucking in the visiting room when you can. Still hold him down. We're going to get you some good dick on out here on the side sit on and, and just you know what it is just, just keep it going what you've been doing you know don't abandon the nigga just because a nigga want to be jailing nigga he just probably one of them niggas that want to be jailing and that's what his life is going to be jailing you ever notice them niggas to be jailing man fuck jailing homie i'm a man that's free as fun as hell man i just love driving around with bitches man i just like man it's just so fun to just kick it with a with a bad bitch and just blowing cush man and so wow nigga God damn all right now we got another nigga in the nose a nigga from portland writes to ball smack he say ball smack i'm in a serious situation I work in a downtown area and I happen to fuck with two bitches that live and work in the same area. One bitch is top bitch and the other bitch is number two bitch. Number two bitch knows about number one bitch and says she's not going nowhere. Number one bitch makes more money and now number one bitch is about to be working in the same office with number two bitch. The the bitches are aware of each other and they have had a conversation about this. Ball smack is about to get explosive. Help a nigga out. All right, y'all. Bottom line. Off top. The game is deep. The game is beautiful. The game is intriguing. And I love these types of scenarios where you can challenge to bring your Mac into the table and see what kind of nigga you really are under pressure. And... If you come through this, man, you, you have so much relevance. Let me, let me flow it, bro. Bottom line is, man, it's fucked up. You may end up losing a bitch, but I think you end up with both bitches. But with both bitches working in the same office, then one bitch may not survive because the bitch is going to be actively at war because they automatically got their now because they both sit on the same swipe. So I think you're in a scenario where you're probably going to lose a bitch, at least temporarily, at least temporarily. And what you have to do right now is look deep within and see which bitch is really top bitch. Because even though I know you got number two bitch, Sometimes you might find that number one bitch ain't really number one bitch, you know. I don't know, it's a difficult concept what I'm talking about, but I think you're going to end up losing a bitch temporarily, maybe. And uh, you like the weather and storm, I think it'd be all right. Hey, it's better have bitches fighting over you than not fighting with you. You feel me? It's best to have bitches fighting over ya. You know. You feel me? Alright. Let's see, uh, we're gonna get into uh Okay, let me do one more. One more reader listening email. Alright. A bitch from San Pedro writes the ball smash. Say ball smash. I'm a real bitch. 
I've been out here doing my thing, and now a bitch is trying to settle down. I used to be a fast bitch out here fucking with Nathan and the niggas that was in that game and niggas with paper. I put the bullshit behind me. I met a new nigga that is super square with a lot of paper. He's a long shoreman in Long Beach. He's a okay nigga, but very L7. I'm trying to work with this nigga. But he's been burned by quite a few bitches because he's such an L7. On our first date, I told this nigga I was kind of hungry. This nigga takes me to KFC and pulls out some motherfucking coupons on a bitch. How can a bitch work with this situation? If this nigga is this sensitive about food, what is a bitch facing? I, I want to work with a nigga. All right, baby girl. You know, I'm going to say like this. You know. It ain't a whole lot of them slick niggas on the streets right now. You know, a lot of them slick niggas is living in prison. A lot of them slick niggas is getting kept by bitches because they can't get no jobs. Used to be gangster ass niggas, man. Niggas doing bad, dead. You know what I'm saying? So you got a weenie. You got a square dude here with paper, longshoreman paper, six figures paper. You know, he pulling out coupons for the KFC. At least the nigga got good money management skills. You know what I'm saying? All I can say is it's gonna be a rough road for a bitch like you that's used to fucking with slick niggas and now having a, you know, it's gonna be like a penitentiary situation for a bitch. Even though a bitch like you should be able to adapt to some shit on some survival, on some survival shit and be able to get in there and get up under a nigga's skin and over time work your way in and be able to get your hand around a nigga brain and get that nigga to do what he want to do after you open his nose up real good to the pussy the way he ought to. But I don't know if you have the endurance and patience to be able to run the game that type of distance. But what I'm really saying is... I know you can't do none of them things and it's probably going to be torture for you dealing with him. You know what I mean? See, you could turn this shit around in your favor over time by wearing the nigga down, but on the way to that, you're going to be subject to his cheap ways. It's going to be frustrating. You're going to be looking at his weenieism, his suckerism. You're going to be constantly comparing his suckerism to the flash and, and the beauty of the quick street niggas that you used to fuck with back in the days and you're gonna be disgusted by his weenieism you're gonna be disgusted by the fact that you gotta bow down and kiss the ass of weenies and we used to fuck with players and shit and you're gonna be like pissed it's gonna be rough for you bitch but it's doable but i don't think you can do it okay i thought i hope that i hope that answers your motherfucking question all right our final reader listener email. Because I know niggas want me to get it pushing into the subject, the subject of the show and whatnot. Final one. A nigga from Colton, California. Rice the ball smack. He say ball smack. It's a lot of youngsters out here. A lot of little niggas my age is out here on this lovey-dovey shit. Telling bitches I love you all the time. I mean, is that shit cool? I mean, is that a good look? Now, that's a very tricky question because I know a lot of niggas instantly think like, man, I ain't telling no bitch I love her. But see, the thing about the word love is the power behind those words. I love you to a bitch. In sincerity, when you talk to a bitch, I love you, baby. It's so much sincerity in that. And so much mental attachment, things that you attach to those words, that when you say that repeatedly, in that frame of mind, it puts you in a state almost of weenieism, I think. For the, for, for, the, 
for the normal person, for the person thinking with weenie thoughts, with L7, with the square type of the regular person thoughts. Like if you're not thinking like like Mac and you're not thinking of just how you just using the words as tools, as verses, you are the word, you're embodying the phrase, I love you to a bitch. So when a, a square is telling a bitch, I love you, I love you, you really mean it from the heart, and then you, you, you do love shit, you know what I'm saying, you're kissing a bitch ass, you're doing what a bitch say, you're doing sucking shit with the bitch, you, you know, you can't even begin to approach the bitch with nothing that would look like Mackin. But, but to an enlightened nigga though, a nigga like me, see I can tell a bitch I love her, you know, I tell a bitch, I be like baby, I love you, you, you are beautiful, you are beautiful, You are. I love you so much, but you know what, if uh, something happened tomorrow and, and I'm not talking to your motherfucking ass no more, you know, I, I will always love you in my heart. But I will be talking to this other bitch, though. Feel me? And in my heart, I shall cherish our memory of time together. Feel me? That's the way I love a bitch. You know what I mean? Because I really love every bitch that I ever fucked with. I ain't mad at none of them bitches. I, I, you know, I love them bitches. But them bitches is gone. You feel me? I'm fucking with who I'm fucking with now, but I love, you know, so it depends, the point I'm trying to make, it depends on how you are applying those words, you know what I mean, because everybody is responsible for what they say, you know, but I'm being totally honest when I tell a bitch, though, I love her, when a lot of motherfuckers be like, damn, but you're lying to a bitch, no, I'm not lying to a bitch, I really do love a bitch. I can let the bitch go tomorrow. You feel me? That's the difference. Anyway, let's get into the topic of the show, man. Today's topic is like, I think it's very necessary. It's this vital game, man. And I wanted to just vibe with motherfuckers, man. I wanted to come back real fast and vibe with motherfuckers lay this down, man, because this is real important. Check me out now. Today's show topic is Cleopatra Bitches and Knowing Thyself. Cleopatra Bitches and Knowing Thyself. Now, off top, There are just different kind of bitches out here, man. And when I talk about Cleopatra bitches, man, I know a lot of motherfuckers are like, what the fuck? Cleopatra bitches, man, what the hell is this nigga talking about? Man, this, this analogy, I, this is my analogy right here. I'm basing my analogy from the life of the great queen Cleopatra who lived, you know, many thousands of years ago. Well, I thought, well, yeah, I guess, you know, before Christ. The great Cleopatra. And I know this guy, I believe his name is Robert Green. He writes about uh, Cleopatra in the, I think in the 48 Laws of Power. I'm not sure. I think he does. I haven't read that book. I really need to read that book. But I think he, he discusses Cleopatra and her her skills at seduction. Because I think seduction is one of the 48 laws of power, I think. But anyway, um, my version of Cleopatra comes from the story of Mark Antony and Cleopatra as written by Plutarch. Plutarch. Okay. Now, in this version of Cleopatra, this version of the story, Cleopatra is, you know, Plutarch depicts Cleopatra in her true, in her true uh, 
mistake. Because throughout history, motherfuckers think Cleopatra was like this super beautiful bitch. And actually, she was when she was young, but when Mark Antony met her, she was a little older. I think she was like in her late 30s or 40s or some shit like that. But anyway. Cleopatra was super skilled in the art of seduction. And Egypt was about to, Egypt was on its last leg. She was the last ruler of Egypt. And she needed to work a deal with Mark Antony because he was he was over part of Rome. He shared power over Rome with a Caesar, right? That's how Pope Mark Antony was. This bitch, Cleopatra, made it her focus and dedication to seduce Mark Antony. And the way that she seduced Mark Antony was, I mean, it was brilliant. You're talking about the bitch was able to appear. The bitch changed every time he seen her. The bitch looked different. She could change up every time he seen her. The bitch could speak a whole bunch of different languages. Bitch speak like five, six, seven different languages fluently. Then the bitch know everything about different odors and fragrances. Then the bitch know how to fuck every kind of way. She know all kind of ways to fuck and to bring different bitches to the fuck and to do everything. Bitch know all the kind of food to bring to the table for this nigga. This bitch play every fucking game that the nigga wanna play. It's just like a nigga wanna play dominoes, bitch wanna play dominoes. Nigga wanna play space, bitch know how to play space. Nigga wanna watch football game, bitch can watch football game with nigga. Nigga wanna go to the motherfucking rap concert, bitch go to the rap concert with nigga. Nigga wanna go outside and cut the motherfucking grass, bitch wanna help the nigga cut the grass. I'm talking about a bitch doing everything to a nigga. To where a nigga is so seduced. Mark Anthony so seduced by this bitch, he can't think of nothing else and ultimately cost him all his power. He fucked off everything. Everybody saw it happening. He ended up having to go to war with the other, with the Caesar he was sharing power with. He ended up just getting killed, dying. You know what I'm saying? And then Cleopatra realizing at the end what she did to this nigga. Then the bitch killed herself. Cleopatra bitches. All right, now. In this modern world that we live in, there's a lot of bitches out there that are Cleopatra bitches. You see them all around you, but then you don't really see them. What's a Cleopatra bitch to you? Cleopatra bitch to me? Cleopatra bitch to you? Is a bitch just really probably out of your league who come for you, who come for you and seduces you and distracts you from doing what you're supposed to do and what you need to do and weakens you and ultimately leads you towards and down a path that's gonna destroy you. I know you heard some stories in the Bible. Samson and Delilah. Delilah cutting Samson's hair. Oh, yes, there's so many different examples out there. But let's bring it up modern to date. Modern day famous Cleopatra bitches. I know you heard about them. Your girl Rihanna would qualify as a Cleopatra bitch. A modern day Cleopatra bitch. What did she do to Chris Brown? What did she do to Matt Kemp? Niggas don't prosper under Rihanna. Matt Kemp fuck off his whole baseball season trying to chase Rihanna around at all these different parties and shit. Trying to fuck with a bitch that's essentially out of his league doing shit he can't do when he need to be at home resting, trying to get ready for the next game, trying to keep his skills sharp, trying to help the team get back to the postseason. But no, he out here chasing Rihanna around at the club at backstage at a Rihanna concert in Kentucky when this nigga need to be in LA the next day to play the fucking San Francisco Giants nigga get off the airplane plane tired as fuck trying to keep up with Rihanna who, who, who can get up when the fuck she want to she ain't gotta be on deck she ain't gotta be healthy as fuck being bomb as fuck like Matt Kemp gotta be 
Cleopatra bitches. And what happened to Chris Brown, man? I know that bitch did something to that nigga that made that nigga slam her head into that fo- slam her forehead into the fucking uh, glove compartment of that whip. What happened? Cleopatra bitches, man. I'm trying to told you. A lot of niggas reach up out of there and grab onto a bitch that ain't got no business fucking with. It ain't nothing like a nigga fucking up behind a bitch. And when niggas see you fucking up behind a bitch, they think you're so weak. Fucking with them Cleopatra bitches. Cleopatra bitches. What's another famous Cleopatra bitch? I know you heard of Robin Gibbons. Even though Mike Tyson went hunting for the bitch, but once the bitch looked at it, she went for the seduction she broke the nigga down quick though and if you look at the mike tyson story the documentary you can see it you can see mike is doing great all the way up until he started fucking with that bitch and when he started fucking with that bitch it was a rap it was a rap he got his ass beat shortly after that because the bitch broke him down the bitch broke him down quick you understand me Another famous, another famous Cleopatra bitch you might have heard of. You might have heard of her. You think you might have heard of her? Shiny O'Neal. Yes, indeed. Hey, Shaq's ex-wife, baby mama. Man, I'm going to just put it like this. Real spit, real talk, real conversation, man. Motherfuckers talk bad about Shaq and all the dirt that Shaq is doing. I'ma just spit this here like this, man, because you know ball smack topsoil be out there and often and on the soil for real throughout them LA areas, man. One of my people used to fuck with old shiny O'Neal back in the days, back in the early days before she escalated up a hustle as she climbed over nigga, over nigga, over nigga, over nigga, till she got to big Shaq nigga. You feel me? Listen. Old Shiny O'Neal told my people, he was like, he was like, he was like, man, you know, uh, man, you know, uh, uh, my ex bitches, uh, fucking with Shaq. I'm like, what? Is you serious? He's like, man, man, she's crazy, man, you know? Um, uh, she tell me they gonna be getting married. She don't give a fuck about none of them bitches he fucking with. They get married. She know it. She got his son. She confident. That bitch confident. And he said, look here, nigga. And, and, and real talk, that's a determined bitch, my nigga. I know she gonna get it done. The bitch already pushing a, a crispy navy on some big wheels. I know you seen it. I was like, okay, man. I'll say it, man. So, bottom line. Shiny came in with the seduction on Big Shaq. And broke Big Shaq down. Ultimately. Broke him down. Until he got away from the bitch. Look at the period of time that Shaq was really married to that bitch. You know. He rolls up through in the Lakers and then, you know, then he started getting into the fucking around fat shit, you know. Shaq kind of got weird there a little bit. But now that nigga back on track. Once he stopped fucking with that bitch, he got back on track. Watch me now. I want to say this, man. You know, with regard to this concept. I think, you know, it's really about knowing yourself, man. Knowing thyself. Knowing thyself. And I know a lot of motherfuckers, you know, you heard that shit. In the Bible, or you heard that somewhere in antiquity, man. But that's the key to everything to me is knowing thyself. You know, you know this bitch is a little bit too much for you, man. It's like, how many niggas are aware of the power of methamphetamines, of glass, of crystal? I mean, we know. That, that shit will will have you high as fuck. We know that. But we don't fuck with it because we respect it. And we don't fuck with it. We don't fuck with heroin because we respect heroin. We look at it and go, you know what? I have seen how heroin is fucked up some motherfuckers. I ain't fucking with them motherfuckers. You know what I mean? You gotta be like that with some bitches. You know? You gotta be like, you know what, you know what, 
you got to be real with yourself, man, sometimes. And I know a motherfucker hit that at me like, ah, oh, man, you got to go for the best and be the best. And, you know, you got to go for the baddest bitches. Man, you got to go for what you know you can do. You got to know thyself, man. You got to know what you are capable of, or capable of dealing with. You gotta examine yourself and be like, okay, I, you know, I can't really fuck with this bitch, fuck with this bitch. It's like, okay, like a nigga like me, okay, ball smack top motherfucking shit, right? And, you know, since we talking about a bitch, I hate to even use a bitch as an example, but. Okay, say like a bitch like Solange. Say like Solange wanna fuck with the ball smack top so Yeah, I fuck with Solange. I fuck with Solange. But you know, I will fuck with Solange on a level that's good for the ball smack top so man. You know what I mean? Because I know that bitch is in a different realm than me. You know, and I ain't gonna try to be keeping up. I'm not gonna be Matt Kemp out in fucking Europe trying to be around this bitch. You know what I mean? I'm gonna see that bitch when I see that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Even if I had, even if I could afford to fly every motherfucking where, I'm, you know, I'm not doing that shit. You know what I mean? You know, you gotta know what you can do and what you can deal with. You gotta know thyself, man. Some bitches is. This is like Entourage right now. If you watching Entourage right now, you know, motherfucking Vince is getting fucked up by Sasha Gray. She got that nigga doing cocaine, fucking the shit out of that nigga, getting distracted and fucking him up. On some Cleopatra shit. But anyway, you know, you gotta know. You know, you know, you, you, some shit is over you, man. This bitch got you doing new drugs and fucking is you doing extraordinary amounts of fucking and all kind of shit that's uncharacteristic of you and you, you're getting off your square not having your business like you're supposed to man that's Cleopatra bitch fucking you up homie you know what I'm saying I'm just trying to keep it real man some niggas man you you know you know niggas be seeing a bad bitch a bitch is so bad nigga be like oh man I can't believe this bitch love me like this and that bitch be coming for you, homie. Cleopatra bitch. I love it. You know, I love when I see bitches size up niggas. And they don't even realize that the bitch can size your ass up and coming for your motherfucking ass. These niggas think he cool it. Nigga, nigga be so, so green. Nigga think he pulling the bitch. But the bitch is really pulling him. You know what I mean? Cleopatra bitches. Another famous Cleopatra bitch, I think. Gabrielle Union, man. Real talk, man. What have that bitch done lately? That bitch done came up by putting D Wade under the fucking wing. Look what D Wade going through now. Look what D. You know what? D Wade ain't gonna have the good type of year motherfuckers think. I'm predicting this shit right now. Motherfuckers think D Wade gonna have this all kind of good year. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. That Gabrielle Union and distracted this nigga. Hey, What's so good about that bitch? What is so fucking good about that bitch? What's the last movie that bitch been in? Niggas, boy. I be seeing them weenie characteristics in niggas. Boy, they be weenie characteristics in niggas. I'ma tell you. Hey! Probably the most famous Cleopatra bitch right now walking around is your girl Cat Stacks. Bitches hate Cat Stacks, boy. Cat Stacks. Seduce. All these Devastate. things. She said, dude, soldier boy. You know? And Devastate. truth Devastate. be told, man, she, she, she hurt soldier boy. Soldier boy look a little stupid now when you see it. See? She hurt soldier boy. She really hurt that nigga. She really hurt that nigga. She exposed that nigga. And bitches is mad at that bitch. Like, that bitch. 
I can't understand, man. And she's a Cleopatra bitch for sure. Yeah, I can't understand it. Bitches be like, man. At Cast Pat. Hardcore pissed off. Like, you know, the bitch couldn't have got the niggas caught up if the niggas wasn't thirsty, but she did. I know she seduced them because I can see it, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, Cleopatra bitches, man. When a bitch stalks you and puts you under the thumb, and destroys you in the long run. Look at Brad Pitt, Angela Jolie, Cleopatra, bitch. I'ma tell you, man, Angelia Jolie got that nigga around here with 15 kids from all different countries, man. That nigga looks tired, man. He ain't really did no bomb movie since he been fucking with that bitch. You know that shit? He ain't did no bomb movie, man. Benjamin Button was like, I and Inglorious was I. I mean, you know, that bitch just did saw and some other shit, man. I don't know, man. Angelia Jolie, man. That's a Cleopatra bitch right there. For sure, homie. It's another one, man. I, you know... I, I, motherfuckers feel me, man. You gotta know thyself, man. You gotta know thyself, man. Know what you can and cannot do, man. You know what I mean? We gonna get on these phone lines, man. We gonna take some calls from motherfuckers, man. Cause, you know, we like taking calls from motherfuckers. So we gonna get into that. All right, we got a caller on the line. We got Rich from Austin, Texas. What's up with you, people? What's up, man? Hey, man. Hi. What? Appreciate you calling in tonight. Uh, what can we do for you? Well, man, I, I want to just tell you that your game has blessed me. Definitely saved my life. Maybe change from a step. And uh, I wanted you to speak on. I'm telling a lot of females lately that are trying to put me in a trick mode and telling me that I need to come out my pockets and I'm standing. Is that something normal to encounter the game once you, you shed that, that stimpish pack to yours? Okay, now let me see if I understood you correctly because I might have missed it. Are you saying that? Females is coming at you for tricking. They want you to trick on them. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's natural uh, bitch behavior, man. The, the, average, the average female is going to come at you like that. It's only a few out there that's just really, you know, enlightened and don't come at you sideways like that off top. But, you know, I... You know, you know, I, I think, well, what do you, what, what do you consider tricking, first of all? How's the bitches coming at you? The thing is, I met this female, and this bitch came out and just said that I need to start breaking off and paying for dates if I want to hit this pussy, and I'm like, oh, bitch, you know, if, if I'm not ready to hit that pussy, I'll see you know. And it's just on his vibe, just, you know, coming to me that I need to drink, I need to break off, and I'm like, oh, hell. The game, you know. <laughs> I feel you, man. But hey, do you le- okay? Like when you meet a bitch, do you at least do a uh, introductory date? No, no, I do. Bitch can bring an oblation from the start, you know. And I learned that from you, so I'm gonna be coming up with on the table and need to see she's, you know, when you get with this game. Okay, so you don't even take bitches out just on an introductory so you can see yeah. if this bitch is worth anything. You something, but you know, you're taking a grip, Austin. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I always say take a bitch that at least go get some motherfucking coffee or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? So, 
I feel you. So all the bitches is coming at you sideways. Everybody tripping. Is that affecting your stable right now? Wait, I can't hear you. Rich, we lost him. We lost him, Matt. Live on the line, we got a caller from Compton, California. We got Lima on the line hollering at the ball smack top soil. What's up with you? All right, I appreciate you calling in from 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 the beautiful city of Compton, California. What, what what's on your mind tonight? Wait, hold on. Wait, what? I said hold on, I'm in love with the man. Wait, okay, you say you in love with a man. What you say? Okay, and 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 what do you want to ask me about? You need some game for that or something? Huh? What, what, what you, how you want me to help? You want me to help you with that or something? I mean, you need some game for that or something? Or what, what's up with that? Okay, well now what 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 you need to do? I mean, what what's going on? Why why you can't stand him? What's wrong with him? What what's wrong with him? I don't think he loves me. You ain't asking him. Did you ask him if he loved you? He told me he loved me, but I don't believe it. Why you say that? Did he do something to show you he didn't love you? He quit talking to me. But that, yeah, that's a good sign. You know what I mean. Um, you know, call him. Did you give him a call? Did you call him? Uh, I don't want to call him. Well, I you know like what? To sit in the house to eat. Okay, well, what you should do is replace that nigga with a new nigga then, baby. <laughs> replace it with a new nigga then, baby. That's what I do. I changed him like my underwear. All right, well, hey, you got anything else you want to say on, on why you on the show right here? Because, you know, we, we got to go on to some other callers. Yeah, I want to give a shout-out to my own girl, Katie. My own girl, 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 my own All right, live on the line, we got the real Thickum calling from Connecticut. CT, what's up, baby? What can I do for you this evening? I, you know, what can I do for you, baby? Um, hmm. so now I just got to shout you out. I was I just logged on to my Twitter and I seen these. I was like, let me pull real quick and shout them out. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. Shout out to this dude. I don't even put it all day. I'd be like, let me see what you putting up today. You be looking, you be looking at the shit I be putting up today. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like it. You like what I be saying? Yeah. Oh, I appreciate it, baby. That's all good, uh-huh. man. Huh? Uh, what you I couldn't hear you right there. I thought you had said something, but I appreciate you calling in, man. You know, um, I, you know, I would, I would just love to keep talking to you for a long time, but man, we got to get some other callers on here, man. You know, we got a show. Okay, well, thanks for taking my call. I'll see you again. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'll be seeing you for the me a thing. All right, well, you know, we always appreciate you calling in, and every time you see us doing something, you call in, you know what I mean? Hey, you need to go to BallSmackStreetwear.com and buy one of my T-shirts, too, because you'll look bomb in one of my T-shirts. I saw your pictures on there. You looking nice on there. You need to be getting one of my T-shirts, baby girl. Oh, 
Okay, definitely. I'm gonna go right now. Alright, yeah. I got this. Alright, baby. Thank you. Alright, you have a good night. You too, bye. Live on the line, we got Amir calling from Compton, California. What's up with you, people? What's going on with you, Boss Hey, I'm living and learning, trying to hold it together and make it do what it's supposed to do, man. What can I do for you tonight, man? Man, brother, I just got a quick question for you, Boss Mack. You know what I'm saying? I know we got the uh, upcoming elections coming up in California, you know what I'm saying, in November. I want to get your whole take on, uh, you know, Proposition 19. Do you think that shit is going to pass? And, uh, you know what I'm saying, if it does pass, how you think California is going to handle it, man? That's the weed proposition. You know what, man? Um, I think it's gonna be cool for it to go down like that, and I think it's gonna be, it's gonna set up like a, it's gonna be like a domino effect. I think, I think California gonna go, gonna, gonna fall suit. Then I think it's gonna be other states gonna be like, fuck that. We need that tax paper too. You already got the. Uh, the first uh, uh, marijuana farms about to go down up in Oakland, where they got that, where they where they going industrial level with it. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's gonna be a whole new thing. You know, it's the taxes. You know, it's gonna be lovely for the state. They're gonna appreciate it. Okay, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm just, uh, it, just checking with you, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming up with a big controversial issue. I just want to get the boss back to speak on the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you know I'm all... That's my question, man. Hey, I'm all for Kush. You, you, you know that. You know what I'm saying? That, that I do. All right, brother. I appreciate the call. No doubt, man, no doubt. Live on the line, we got a caller from Michigan. Uh, Akila. What's up with you, baby girl? Nothing. Um, you on Twitter? Yeah, that's actually how I got this number. That's, that's how you got the number because you saw me put it out there, call into the show? Yeah, and I said I was going to call and tell you what I'm scared of. What you scared of, baby girl? Um, lying and um, I don't know. I'm, I'm scared of old people. You scared of old people and lying? No, dying, like dying, being dead. Okay, why you scared of being dead, baby girl? Huh? Why you scared of being dead? I don't know, cause I don't know what you supposed. To, I don't know what to do. Like, why would you? I don't know. I just oh. wish people could live a little longer than they supposed to. <laughs> okay, I feel you, baby girl. Uh, hey, I, you know what? I appreciate this call. I mean, you know, this a this a highly unusual call. Okay, now, and you scared? You don't? You don't? You scared of old people too, right? Yeah, because you're like anticipating them dying. <laughs> but young well, people die quick, though. But young people die quick, though. Yeah, they do. I mean, I you know. know. I mean, I got a lot of dead homies, baby girl. I mean, you know. Well, what are you scared of? I'm not. I, I'm scared of this phone call because I want to know what direction we going in with this, baby. Uh, <laughs> I don't have no direction. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't yeah. know what, what am I supposed to talk about? Hey, I... I just, you know, I just appreciate you calling in, you know what I mean? This is this is a show where we just do real conversation, man, and um, I guess maybe you don't know what the show about. Want to hear something real crazy? What? Want to hear something crazy? What's crazy? All right, so I just broke up with my boyfriend five minutes ago, right? Right. And all I he like his his motive to give me the stay is I'm like okay you what are you doing while we didn't get to say you might as well just stay with me. So you know I'll be like what the what the stuff is that you gonna expect me to stay if you say crazy just like that you know? 
Well, maybe his love for you is so overwhelming. It's just overwhelming his, his reason. Maybe, you know, it's the, he can't see nobody else fucking with you in no type of way. He just overwhelmed, you know. Yeah, but that don't make you to tell me you're doing stuff. You're not going to tell me, so I'm not going to stay because I'm not going to find out. That makes me feel crazy. I feel you, baby girl. Uh, well, hey, you know, I appreciate you calling in. We got to we gotta get some other calls and whatnot, you know. All right, baby. All right, baby. Okay, live.